Last week we conducted one live webinar on main sentence writing practice. So today we are going to have live at 7 o'clock on YouTube. There we are going to discuss how to approach art and culture and how to answer the questions from this art and culture from the main's point of view and try to join this live at 7 o'clock in YouTube and I will be meeting you there on live. Thank you. Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 31st July 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see first topic. So before that, let us try to see our today's quote. So today's quote is success. Success comes from thousands of hours of work that one no one sees. So actually, yes, you will be seeing many successful persons, but you will be not seeing that. So how much time they are spending? So how much hard work they are doing? So if I want to come up with this video as early as possible, so I have to work background four to five hours. Okay. So your success will not come easily. So success will come with hard work. So if you want to clear this UPSC, yes, you have to do hard work. And if you are watching any song of, for example, let us take three to five minutes of song. So they will be spending a lot of days, even one month, okay, to make that song. So here success comes from the hard work. So without hard work, we can't expect success. So now let us try to see first topic. So this topic I took from Hindu. So in Hindu, in the first page itself, I found this image and this image is very interesting. So this is about our floating solar park. So actually there was one question in 2022 prelims also regarding the solar panels, right? So now let us try to see this topic. So this topic is important from our GS paper 3 point of view. So now let us try to see why it is in news because our prime minister, our prime minister virtually inaugurated this floating, floating 100 megawatt solar panel on water body of this NTPC Ramagundam. So this NTPC Ramagundam which is located in state of Telangana. So here our prime minister he inaugurated floating 100 megawatts of this solar panel. So actually let me know in the comment box which is the largest floating solar power plant in India. Okay so please let me know this uh, answer for this question in the comment box without any fail. So now let us try to see some details regarding this floating solar plants. So what is the meaning of this sol uh, floating solar plants? So especially beginners, they might be knowing about this solar plants, they are present on the land. So but what are these floating solar plants? So we are going for deployment of this photovoltaic panels on the surface of water bodies. So here we are not going for deployment of this uh, photovoltaic panels on land but we are selecting some water bodies on those water bodies we are going to have this deployment of photovoltaic panels and we can see they will be floating on the surface of this uh, water so the name that got for the solar plant here is floating solar plants because they will be present on the surface of these water bodies so what will be the advantage yes it will be having advantage it is a one of the alternative for this land based solar arrays okay so it is one of the alternative and as you all know that there are large number of reservoirs especially in the southern India so because of this it will provides a huge opportunity for us to go for renewable energy okay and if you're talking about advantages so if you want to go for establishment of this uh, solar plants on land yes we need to go for land acquisition so here whenever we want to go for this land acquisition or land lease so that will leads to difficulties so that will lead to delays so the key challenge that faced by this renewable energy plant owners they that will be land acquisition grid connectivity regulations etc so whenever we are going for this floating solar power plants yes because of this increasing population there is increase in the pressure on the land so that can be addressed when we are going for this floating power plants right and next one here is that will also helps to reduce this grid connection cost as well and that will also reduce the water evaporation and even that will also improve the water quality because there will be red, uh, less or uh, reduced algal blooms. So now let us try to see some facts regarding this NTPC that is National Thermal Power Corporation Limited. 
So NTPC Limited, it is a central public sector undertaking that is CPU. Okay, central public sector undertaking and which mainly comes under Ministry of Power. And it is the India's largest energy conglomerates. And if you see here, so we came up with this NTPC in year 1975 and the aim was to accelerate power development in the country. So because of development, yes, whenever we are moving towards development, yes, there will be the increased demand for the energy. So we need to come up with this energy production. So at that time of 1975, we came up with this NTPC to accelerate power generation or power development in the country. And the important aim it is to provide reliable power and also to provide some solutions okay in economical efficient environment friendly manner etc and we are also focusing on innovation and as well as agility and here this ntpc which became maharatna company in 2010 so let me know what is the difference between mini ratna and maharatna okay and this ntpc okay which is located in new delhi so now let us try to see the map where exactly this floating power plant is located okay i am using here okay you can see now so this is the location of this floating solar power plant ntpc right and actually at present here our prime minister he inaugurated this 100 megawatts floating solar ntpc so this is the location here and here you can see the nearby locations as well so here nearby we can see godavari river it is flowing right and here from this godavari river so this power plant will be getting enough water so actually water which is used as a coolant right so we need a proper water resource if for the development of our cut for coming up of any manufacturing or any company so here you can see here uh, Ramagundam NTPC highway link is there and here you can see thermal station that is Ramagundam thermal power station is located here and here if you zoom this then you can see this floating power plants how they will be looking like so this is a reservoir okay water and here we can see they are floating like this I hope you can see in the image right and now let's move forward and let us try to see the next topic it is regarding rustic kotayam rolls out of pink carpet so this article which is talking about this uh, water lily festival that is going to celebrate in this kerala so especially in the backwaters of kerala so we have this water lily and it is one of the tourism site now okay so now let us try to see this topic so this topic is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 and first let us try to see why it is in use so gorgeous water lilies that is especially pink water lilies they have taken over the backwaters of kotayam and because of this it is throwing tourists okay through this site so now it mainly attracting the lot of amount of tourists so for that here they are going to do some preparations like boats etc so if you see details so visitors they started trickling into and to catch a glimpse of the sun rising over the sea of pink blooms so it is also called a sea of pink pink blooms so here visitors they have been started coming to this area so here Maraikal village so in this Maraikal village so it is one of the epicenter of this pink bloom that is caused by this uh, gorgeous water lilies so they launched some preparations to organize a tourism festival in this area now so whenever this pink water lilies they blossoms so at that time so th this area will be like a tourist site and here this village people they will be conducting some preparations and they will be organizing this tourism festival during this uh, blossoms of this water lily and this event which also coincides with the upcoming onam season as well so because of this here meenachil meenantara kodur river linking program in association with this Tiruvarappu Gram Panchayat and as well as Maraikal Tourism Society, they will be organizing this tourism festival. So here, if you're talking about this pink vista, it mainly covers the backwaters of Kotayam. And every monsoon season, okay, every monsoon season, so there will be a pink water lily blossoms happens. So actually because of this COVID-19 earlier than 2019-2020, they went for online tourism. So actually this initiative is a part of efforts 
by authorities to make sure the people around the world they are connected to these destinations despite existing travel restrictions so actually what happened because of again now the surging of the cases so because of the some areas we have some restrictions but here due to this covid 19 2019 2020 here these uh, these organizations they went for online online tourism and they also want to connect the people present in the world okay so despite of the travel restrictions here the people they should not miss this event so because of this they connect an online but now they are going for offline right so now let us try to see the location exactly where it is present okay just wait for one minute Yes, let me type here. Yes, now you can see. So we have to go to Kerala and we have to see the backwaters of Kerala. And here exactly we can see this Maraikal Pink Lagoon. So here you can see the image also Maraikal Pink Lagoon. So it is one of the tourist attraction in this Tiruvarappu in Kerala. And you can see the water lilies will be like a very very nice and you can type this uh, Maraikal Pink Lagoon in the in the YouTube and you can see that video as well. And now we'll just move back and let us try to see next topic. It is regarding invasive frog and snake dent world economy. So it is talking about invasive species. So this article talking about invasive species especially in your environment and ecology you will be having a one uh, topic regarding this invasive species so this is at most important and we have to gather some examples so examples will be here we have african bullfrog and we have snake okay we have snake that is brown tree snake so these are two invasive species that led to decreasing of world economy so especially in europe so now let us try to see this topic and let us try to see what is the impact as well. So this article is important from your mains and even from your prelims. And now let us try to see why it is in news now. So two invasive species. The first one is American bullfrog and second one is brown tree snake. So because of these two invasive species, they cost the world and it estimated like dollar 16 billion. So between 1986 to 2020, so these two species that led to loss of dollar 16 billion to the world economy. So why? Why they are causing problem? Why they leads to uh, economic decrease? So how they led to decreasing of economic revival or economic development? Because so these species, these invasive species, that is American bullfrog and as well as brown tree snake, they caused problems from this crop damage to power outrages. So this is the thing which mainly published in the recent study in scientific reports. So if you see details, it mainly says that so this brown tree frog and as well as a green frog, it is known as lithobates castabianus. So actually the weight of this frog here is two pounds that is about 0 0.9 kgs that is around 900 grams that had been shown a great impact in Europe. So this is the thing which mainly said in this scientific reports. So here brown tree snake which is also known as Boiga irregularis. It multiplied uncontrollably on the specific islands. For example, Guam. So here you have to know the location of this Guam. So this Guam is, is in the news because of issue between this North Korea and as well as America. So America that is USA which has a base in this Guam. So North Korea which mainly threatened America that we are going to attack this Guam. Right? So because of this, this Guam which is seen in news from last two years onwards. So here due to this brown tree snake which is growing uncontrollably in some Pacific islands for example Guam and Mariana islands. Okay, so you have to know where is this Mariana Trench is located and actually this Mariana Trench it is the deepest trench in the world which is located in this Pacific Ocean, right? So if you're talking about this uh, brown tree snake that is irregular or uncontrolled growth that is seen in this Guam and as well as Mariana Islands. So they were the species just introduced by this US troops in the World War II. So because of this that led to a great damage to the environment and ecology and even habitat which is present in those areas. 
So what is this invasive species first of all? So invasive species is nothing but uh, it is nothing but foreign species or alien species which is not which is not native to that so and so area. But we are bringing those species from one area and we are introducing in the in the in the another area. For example, it may be plants, it may be animals, it may be pathogens or any other organisms which are non-native, which are not present in that ecosystem. But we are bringing from one ecosystem and we are introducing in another ecosystem. So because of this, it mainly causes huge damage for the environment and even economy and even that will be having some harmful effect on the human health as well. So this is the meaning of invasive species. So why? Why these species they will become invasive? That means why the number of these species had been increased rapidly? So because there will be no competition for them. So there will be no predation. That means the animals which are present in that area, they will be not consuming them. And they will be also have the capability to transmit pathogens as well. And that will lead to disruption of local ecosystem and the ecosystem functions. So these are some important basic facts regarding this invasive species. And now let us try to talk about American bullfrog. It is somewhat interesting, right? So if you see the habitat, so there is a wide range of wetlands. So they mainly present in this wetlands and even man-made ponds, canals, ditches, reservoirs, and they will colonize. Okay, they will start colonizing that water body. For example, lakes, marshes, bogs, and rivers. So these in these all these wetlands, we can see this frog, this frog will be living. And if you're talking about this description of this American bullfrog, it is like large green or brown in color and it mainly grows up to 20 centimeters long and the weight will be like more than 500 grams. And if you're talking about origin of this bullfrog, so this bullfrog commonly seen in this North America. So originally, actually this frog which introduced in the Europe for the consumption and also as a pet. Then what happened that led to increasing of the number of this bullfrog and now in the wide range of habitats including ponds, swamps and as well as reservoirs, marshes and irrigation canals. So they are filled with this American bullfrogs now. So especially they are seen in some countries like Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Slovenia, Great Britain etc. So they are mainly fighting with this American bullfrogs now. So what are the impacts? So what impact that led by this American bullfrog? So if you're talking about the size and the breeding capacity and they'll be having a lot of appetite. So because of this, they are giving a tough competition for the native species. Okay. And even so these frogs are well known for transmitting some lethal disease to the wildlife. For example, Clytrid, okay, clytrid fungus it is transmitted by this frogs and that led to the death of the native frogs in that region and they are occupying the whole world in this area where we can see this invasive species and actually these uh, bullfrogs they are also tolerant to the wide ranges of habitats and conditions and even including the temperate regions as well. So even now they can live in the northern Ireland and as well as Ireland where the temperature is very very low. And they also predate upon the native fauna and that will lead to colonizing, okay, that will lead to colonization. So whatever the uh, thing that we studied in the colonization chapter in the world history, that we can apply here, right? So what happened, the localized reduction in the species numbers and the species is unlikely to be preyed upon the tadpoles, okay? So because of this, what happened, there is decrease in the number of native, native species. So there is increase in the number of this invasive American bullfrog that is seen. So because of this that led to economic loss. So now let us try to see next topic it is regarding COVID-19 infection, COVID-19 reinfection common in this BA.5, BA5 variant. So we need to talk about reinfection again the number of cases in India they have been increasing steadily. So here what might be the reason? The reason here is because of this reinfection. So this article is important from your GS paper 3 under science and technology. So now let us try to see this topic in detail. So Omicron BA2 sub variant which is currently dominating okay. So actually what happened in this Omicron we had number of variants. So one of the variant here is BA2 sub variant okay and currently this dominant Omicron BA5 variant is linked to higher odds of causing second SARS coronavirus to infection 
regardless of vaccination status. So even though if you got vaccination or even though if you don't got the vaccination, so because of this Omicron BA.5, there is increase in number of cases. So there is increase in number of cases because of this Omicron BA.5 that is mainly seen. So if you see some details, it mainly says that 10% of BA.5 cases were reinfections. When we are seeing about, when you are comparing with this BA2 variation, variants, so it is like just 5.6% of reinfection with this BA2, but it is 10% of reinfection with this BA5. So in this way, we can say that a reduction in the protection conferred by the previous infection against BA5 compared to that of BA2. So even we are getting infection, for example, if you got this uh, COVID-19, so you will be getting antibodies and you will be developing antibodies. Even if you are taking this uh, vaccines, you will be getting antibodies, that is you will be developing immunity. So even though in spite of this uh, status of vaccination, so this BA5 reinfection is very much high compared to that of this BA2. So moreover, vaccines, they appear to be less effective in reducing the risk of severe outcomes for this BA5 compared to that of BA2. Okay, so vaccines are less effective to this BA5 compared to that of this BA2 Omicron subvariant. So what are the what are the damages that are mainly caused by this de-infection? Yes, as you all know that this is the coronavirus surface, we will be having the spike proteins. So this spike proteins on the surface of the SARS coronavirus 2, they are using to break into the heart muscles as well. So because of this, whenever there is rupture that is happening to this cardiac muscle or the heart muscle, that will lead to damaging, okay, that will trigger the damaging attack from the immune system as well. So this is the data which is according to the new research. So here SARS coronavirus to spike protein interacts with the other proteins as well in the cardiomyocytes that is the myocytes or the cells of this uh, cardiac muscles and that will lead to the inflammation of this heart muscles or heart uh, muscle cells that is cardiac cells. So this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding this focus on oil. So areas of one of the largest old growth okay so the areas of one of the largest largest old growth in forest on the earth that is mainly seen in this virunga national park so actually this virunga national park is located in this drc okay congo okay democratic republic of congo we have this virunga national park so in this in this rain forest of earth so they came up with the auction auction for the oil drilling so they came up with this auction for the oil drilling so because of this we can see it might have some impact on the environment ecosystem in that area so if you see some details so why this decision came up by this democratic republic of congo so they said that we want to sustain financially we need to maintain some financial stability so because of that we do not have any other alternative we can go for oil drilling in this virunga national park so now let us try to see some facts regarding this virunga national park so this Virunga National Park is known as Albert National Park and it mainly established in 1925. So it is Africa's first national park and this national park which is very much famous for this gorillas. So gorillas, uh, angutans, orangutans and monkeys they comes under this uh, primates, order primates. Okay, So they belongs to this monkey family itself. So it is a UNESCO that is United Nations Educational, Scientific and Culture Organization designated as UNESCO designated World Heritage Site in 1979. Okay, so they are mainly located between this Virunga Mountains and as well as the Rensvori Mountains. So the name here is Virunga National Park. So now let us try to see the location of this Virunga National Park where exactly it is located. Just a second. So now you can see this image of this Virunga National Park. So we have to move to Africa and in Africa in this area you can see this is the Virunga National Park. I hope you can see right. So if you zoom out. So this area which is located in this Democratic Republic of Congo in this DRC we have this Virunga National Park. So if you see the nearby here we can see one lake. So there are number of lakes that are mainly seen here. So you have to see the nearby lakes what what is that lake and what is the name here we can see the lake Edward. So this lake Edward is very much near to this uh, Virunga National Park. So apart from this uh, lake Edward you can also see one more lake here that is Lake Kivu. 
okay lake kivu that you can see here so you have to see the nearby areas as well and here you can see lake albert so here you can see chain of lakes right so lake albert here you can see lake edward lake kivu and here you can see one more important and the long lake that is lake lake tanganyika okay lake tanganyika so these are the four important lakes that you can see and not only here you can also see some more lakes here so they are the chain of lakes that is lake mavaru okay so these are lake mavaru so those are some important lakes that you can see and you have to locate them actually here you can see the biggest lake that is lake victoria is also there here okay virunga national park and here you have the chain of lakes and here you can see here lake victoria so in this way you can use this maps okay so this is democratic republic of congo so here actually what happened means uh, actually this area we can see that will comes under this tropical area right so this drc region and this gabon and uh, this tanzania so that will comes on equator and nearby equator so in this area we can see there will be heavy rainfall right so here we can see the equator will be passing here and this mainly comes under our tropical region so here we can see the uh, thick rainforest are present because of heavy rainfall and heavy temperature we can see coroclo conventional rainfall and we can see the rainforest which are present here and in this way you can see this map and here you can identify so which areas which climatic conditions are seen so in this way this maps will be very very useful okay so here you can see here we have this uh, tropical rainforest and here you can see around this grassland will be there and here in the up and the bottom we can see the deserts are present so this is a physical features of africa and now let us move backward and let us try to see the next topic so this topic it is about endangered species and in the image you can see one butterfly species so this butterfly is monarch butterfly so this butterfly is monarch butterfly so here title says endangered species and why it is in use so this monarch butterfly is now listed as endangered so who listed that is iucn so iucn okay iucn which listed this monarch butterfly as endangered butterfly that is international union for conservation of nature so if you see some details it mainly says that here iucn that is international union for conservation of nature which added this butterfly monarch butterfly under this red list for the first time and this estimate suggests that the population in this north america which had declined up to 72 percentage in the past 10 years so from last 10 years that is last one decade there is decreasing of number of this monarch butterfly by 72 percentage so now let us try to see the categories under this iucn so we have not evaluated data deficient least concern least concern means we have a lot of numbers so we should not have any concern regarding that and near threatened vulnerable and the endangered so now it is listed under this endangered so after this endangered we will be having the status that is critically endangered and this one is extended in wild that means in the forest we don't see that animal and only in the captive breeding centers and in the conservation sites we can see that presence okay last one is extinct extinct means nothing but extended in wild in and also even the conservation sites and this is that butterfly that is a monarch butterfly and now let us try to see some facts regarding this monarch butterfly so actually it is a subspecies of this Danus plexippus butterfly and one speciality of this butterfly is it can travel 4000 kilometers across America. So actually what happened there is decreasing of this migration that is mainly seen and even this butterfly which also seen in some countries like Australia, Hawaii and as well as India. So if you are talking about what are the issues, so what led to the decreasing of this number of uh, this butterfly, so what are the reasons, so population population of this butterflies in this north america which had been declined by 22 23 to 72 percentage over the last one decade that is last 10 years so the population in this a population of this eastern monarchs they mainly migrate to the eastern us uh, from this us to canada because they have the capability to migrate 4000 kilometers so it had been decreased so what might be the reason so actually these butterflies they mainly breed in this milkweeds so here this is a one of the plant species there is decreasing of this milkweeds plants 
okay because that is mainly removed by the farmers by spraying some herbicides so that led to decreasing of this population and next one here is legal and illegal logging and deforestation so it is also one important reason and even whenever we are going for agriculture uh, agriculture and even urban development so which leads to the habitat destruction so whenever there is no proper habitats how they can breed and next one is frequent storms and droughts they are also one reason for that led to the decreasing of this number of butterflies so i want to make a small announcement so from day after tomorrow so for example uh, not day after tomorrow from tomorrow onwards that is on monday so this answer writing course it is going to be started so here we have some exclusive features of this uh, answer writing course so we are coming up with live classes on every sunday and we will be discussing how to read so and such a topic and how to write the answer and in how many ways you can write introduction so what are the points that you have to include in the mains uh, mains body that is the main body of the answer and even how to improve your presentation like how can you include maps how which of the diagrams that you can add okay and how can you write the flow chart so all the things that we're going to discuss in this live classes so i can sh i can say that 100% sure that if you join this course so within 2 to 3 months you are going to excel this answer writing course so the change that you can see okay and one more thing here is we are giving to you the weekly targets and this is one year one year course and there will be also essay and case study practice as well and we are also providing evaluation of your answer and model answer for your uh, model answer and even one to one mentorship so this is a one exclusively high qualified course so you can join this course and the registrations already had been open and admissions are going on and you can join this course and if you want to join this course so visit our website atosisacademy.com there you have to register with your email id and you can click on the course list there you can see this daily mains answer writing course and you can click on buy now and you can do the payment so if you have any doubts regarding this course you can call me on this number 8074765513 okay and now let us try to see some more important articles that appeared title says india to ground all its mig 21 by 2025 report so why we are going to ground all mig 21 because of recent crashes so from last 20 months there were six crashes of this mig 21 happened so actually we got this mig 21 from the soviet union so this soviet union had been disintegrated in 1991 but we are still using this mig 21 why so these are some questions that we need to address and now let us try to see why it is in news so mig 21 bison aircraft of indian air force which crashed in rajasthan on july 28th okay that led to killing of two pilots abroad the trainer version of this fighter aircraft so this aircraft had been crashed so because of this we are going to come up with bringing down or you bringing down the use of this mig 21 soon so i also added one video so if you want you can see this uh, watch this video okay so here you have to see how this flight flight of this mig 21 is happening and how the crash of this mig 21 happened okay so this is the image of this mig 21 and this is the crash image okay so this had these are the two pilots they lost their life okay and now let us move forward let us try to see history of this mig 21 so mig 21 it is india's longest serving fighter plane and it was designed by this uh, mio uh, mio 1 gurevich design bureau of erstwhile soviet union right and the soviet union that mainly sold this fighter aircraft to india on some favorable conditions and favorable terms and it also agreed for the production in this hal that is hindustan aeronautics limited as well so actually why we got this mig 21 because in 1962 we had indo china war so after that for the first time we got this engine mig 21 in year 1963 especially to improve our defense and if you are talking about some facts regarding this mig 21 bison so here indian air force which had to keep this mix longer in the service because of delays in the induction of newer aircraft so why we are using this outdated mig 21 because we are mainly having some delays in induction of new fighter aircrafts into our air force so due to delays here iaf that is indian air force which is facing the crunch to maintain certain squadron strength 
so here we have yes we need to maintain some strength so for that we are mainly using this mec 21 so actually there is some delays in this indigenous tejas program and even there is delays in this rafael deal so because of this here we are still using this mec 21 so what are the reasons behind this frequent crash so first of all so it is having just a single engine so here mic 21 it is having the single engine right so if if suddenly if this engine which made a switch off means yes it will take some time to be restarted so if you are having the two engines means so if one engine is or uh, engine is stopped means yes automatically the second engine will be running but here if you are having only sing, in single engine means again you have to restart that engine so by this time so what happened that will lead to some danger and this one is poor engine quality so this mic 21 has been upgraded dozens of times since induction into our air force but even though whenever we are coming up with number of with a uh, number of upgrades so engine could not be improved so it is a one of the drawback and this one is there is no proper alternatives because of this we are using this mic 21 okay so there are some delays in this stage as and as was rafael deal and next topic it is regarding SCO that is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So zero tolerance for terrorism in all manifestations must. So India at SCO foreign ministers meet. So this topic is important from your international relations which mainly comes under your GS paper too. So context says that external affairs minister participated in this meeting of this SCO council of foreign ministry which is mainly held at this Uzbekistan starter that is Tashkent. So these are the members okay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So recently the two members they had been added into this SEO let me know those two members. So one member is Iran so let me know the second member so actually this didn't become the complete member so the process is going on. So if you are talking about this Shanghai Cooperation Organization which mainly founded in 2001. So the important aims behind the formation of this Shanghai Cooperation Organization is to resolve the border disputes between the countries and to fight against terrorism and to bolster regional security that is to improve this regional security and even to counter American influence in the Central Asia. So these are the members. Okay, so these are the members recently in Iran which, make, which mainly became the full time member of this Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So other members are, so four stands are there that is Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan. Turkmenistan is a not part. So this is one important fact. And this one is China, Russia, India and Pakistan. So recently in 2022 prelims there was one question regarding this Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So whenever any organization that is seen in news means yes you have to see the countries which are present. Okay, let us see the map of these countries which are part of this Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So these are the SCO countries. So SCO countries are, let us move to this. So here you can see Russia. So Russia it is the biggest country in the world. So this is the Russia. Russia it is a part of this SCO and here we have China. Apart from that here we have India and here we have Pakistan and here we have four stands that is Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan is not part, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. So these four stands which are present together right Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan they are the part and even Iran which mainly became the recent member and recent meet which mainly held in this Uzbekistan's capital okay that is Tashkent, Tashkent is located here. And there is a small water body I, I hope you can see on the screen right. So it is Adyar lake. So this is Adyar lake which is present in this Uzbekistan. So you have to remember that lake as well. And now let us come back and let us move forward. So why this SEO is very important that is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So actually the Shanghai Cooperation Organization which is mainly seen as Eastern counterbalance to NATO. So it is like a NATO in the eastern part. So as you all know western part in the western countries they formed this group that is not Atlantic Treaty Organization. So in the same way here this uh, Middle East countries and as well as Central Asian countries they came forward and they formed this SCO and also focusing on enhancing security cooperation among the members and even they are mainly focusing on to deal with the terrorism particularly this IS okay Islamic State terrorist 
and they are also focusing on how to increase economic cooperation between the between the countries in this region and they are also focusing on one road one one chinese one belt and one road initiative actually india it is not at all favoring this and india has pushed for connectivity and as well as chabahar port in iran okay i will be also showing the location of this chabahar port and next one is international north south transport corridor also some important areas so because of this here seo is very important and now let us try to see some news highlights so our ex affairs minister he visited this tashkent which is the capital city of uzbekistan and he mainly focused on taking part in the meeting of this seo council and in this meeting they mainly discussed about upcoming seo meet right so now actually we are going to have this meet in this 15th to 16th september 2022 so what was the india stand on the meeting so india which mainly welcome this seo meet and even here we are mainly pushed for this chabahar port so where is the chabahar port is located so actually this chabahar port is a sea port located in the south eastern part of iran on the gulf of oman okay and it is a very important for india because it will helpful to connect afghanistan and as well as central asia we can bypass pakistan so i will be showing the map so that you can understand so how we are going to bypass this pakistan okay one minute so now you can see this chabahar port so here this is iran so we have this chabahar port here so it is normally called as port of shahid kalantri and we have port of shahid bahesti so here you can see the chabahar bay so in this chabahar bay we have this port which is located here right so what is the bay bay it is nothing but it land which is covered on the three sides and one side which mainly opens to the sea so one side which is open to the sea and the three sides are covered by the land here so this is chabahar bay so actually this chabahar it is one of the city which is present here okay so chabahar it is a capital city of this chabahar conte so here we have the ports that is port of shahid kantari and port of shahid bahesti here and you can see if i zoom in you can see this is the port okay so this is the port and now let's come back and if you are talking about some more important details actually i said that i will be showing you how yes how this uh, port which is useful to by bypass this pakistan right so here this is india so i hope you can see here this is india and this is iran and here we have pakistan so if you want to go to this afghanistan we can directly go in this way we can use the airspace of pakistan but pakistan will not allow us to do so from mumbai from mumbai port or gujarat port we will be going to this chabahar port which is located here and from this uh, chabahar port which is located in this iran we can uh, go through this railways and roadways and we can reach this afghanistan and also we can reach from afghanistan to the central asian countries as well okay middle east countries or central asian countries so we can reach this through this via iran and in this way chabahar port is very much important for india to bypass pakistan and if you are talking about china support for the extension of the cpec into this afghanistan that is china pakistan economic corridor so actually this china pakistan economic corridor which is mainly passes through this pak occupied kashmir region so it is mainly present like this so it is connecting this xinjiang province in china to this gwadar port in this uh, pakistan so here here we have if you see this is iran this is pakistan in iran we have this chabahar port beside this we have this gwadar port okay so here china which mainly want to use this gwadar port to enter into this indian ocean and it want to bypass this strait of malacca okay it is one of the choke point right so here china support for the extension of the cpc that is china pakistan economic corridor into this afghanistan and china is also making some reservations for this china pakistan economic corridor extension as well and this one here is taliban they was representing afghanistan at the summit okay so indian affairs minister did not have a bilateral meeting with the taliban now so these are some important issues they are mainly highlighted and next topic is regarding mission watsalya so new norms for mission watsalya so this article is important from your gs paper to under governance so here ministry of women and child development is implementing the central sponsor scheme okay so through states and as well as governments 
UT governments that is human territories governments so here this mission which is mainly working under or running under this ministry of women and child development so it is one of the important funds fact and it is a central sponsor scheme so in the central sponsor scheme there is a funds which is divided between center and as well as states so if you see some details it mainly says that under it a monthly grant of rupees of 4000 per child okay monthly there will be getting 4000 per child provided for a family based non institutional care and even that will include the sponsorship as well and under this mission whatsapp yeah, it is a partnership between the states and as well as districts and they are trying to provide 24 by 7 service okay helpline service and which is mainly defined under this juvenile justice act of 2015 and this mission was smart cellular scheme which also envisages setting up of cradle baby reception centers and at least one specialized adoption agency as well so these are some important updates in this mission was cellular yeah. So, if you are talking about this mission, what is it? It is mainly focusing on improving function function of statutory bodies, and next one is it is focusing on strengthening of service delivery, okay, service delivery services, and upskill institutional care or services, and to encourage non institutional community based care and training in as well as capacity building on duty of duty holders. So here there are some many other schemes to come up by the government of India. They are focusing on empowering of women. For example, Mission Portion 2.0, Mission Shakti, Mission Watsalya, okay, and two lakhs Angan Wadis to be upgraded to the Saksham Angan Wadis. So these are some important steps taken by government of India. And now let's try to see some facts regarding this Mission Watsalya. It is an umbrella scheme and is focusing on child protection services in the country. And they are focusing on improving the functioning of statutory bodies, strengthening the service delivery structures, and upscale or upgrade institutional care and services, and encourage non-institutional community-based care and emergency outreach services, training and capacity building. Right? And if you are talking about objectives of this scheme, so they are focusing on healthy and happy childhood, and they want to provide some opportunities, and those opportunities will foster sensitive. support to and as a synchronized ecosystem for the development of children and they are mainly coming up with improving the children status according to this justice uh, juvenile justice act of 2015 as well and they want to achieve the sustainable development goals for example hunger poverty etc and as one is they are also focusing to promote family based non institutional care of children as well so these are some important highlights of this watsalya scheme and now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's hindu and the date here is 31st july and this is delhi edition so first topic i discussed it is regarding this floating power plant of uh, it is located in this telangana state so this topic i discussed and there is one article regarding this chinese ship set to dock in sri lanka so actually recently chinese sri lanka which mainly denied the information regarding this chinese ship and now it gave it mainly gave the information and if you move forward there is nothing much important in this city page and in this page number 3 also you can skip and page number 4 also you can skip and you can directly come to this page page number 7 here and here you can see rustic kottayam rolls out pink carpet so this is about the tourism festival of waterlily i discussed this topic and here in this page number 7 you can see desesu war against drug so it is about uh, drugs which had been seized in the country so number of articles we studied that so cocaine and as well as uh, heroin which had been which had been a see which had been seized right so actually here our home minister he said that so here government it is effectively effectively functioning especially to uh, to wage a war against this drug menace and they are saying that about between this 2014 to 2021 so drug uh, rupees 20000 crore were been seized in the countries okay were seized in the country and we are also having the zero tolerance policy towards narcotics and drugs abuse so this is the thing and you can collect some information regarding this drug abuse in india so this is your homework and if you move forward here you can see the article that is speed up release of under trail says prime minister so an important problem that we are facing in india especially in the jails his under trails had been increasing so here our prime minister say that we need to release this under trails okay so now let us move on forward and here you can see new e waste rules threaten jobs collection and as well as network 
so already i discussed about this what are these new e waste rules so you have to revise that topic once again and if you move over here you can see state fails to give ministry details of ele elephant reserves so you have to make a note regarding so how many elephant reserves are present in india and in which state you are having highest elephant reserves and which state is having highest number of elephants and you have to see where your state stands so this is your homework and let me know in the comment box without any fail and next topic is regarding new anti trafficking bill i already discussed about this topic i think two days ago so you have to defy, revise this topic and if you move forward here you can see china is holding military drill near taiwan so please open the map and you have to see where is this china and taiwan located so what is the issue between this china and taiwan you have to know and if you move forward here you can see russia suspends gas supply to latvia so recently here uh, here Gazipam which suspended this glass supplies to this Latvia because of some violations of conditions okay which is mainly seen from this Latvia side. So you have to know for which country still now Russia suspended this gas and oil supply. So let me know in the comment box we discussed that topic number of times. And if you move forward in the science and technology there is one article regarding these two monkeypox cases in India not linked to Europe. Okay so actually what happened these two monkeypox virus so they are not linked to Europe. So smaller number of the cases they fall in the cluster and this is different from when whatever the thing which we identified from this Europe. So you have to know about what are the variations and what is the role of variations in this topic. And here there is a topic regarding this reinfection risk that is Omicron BA4 and Omicron BA5 and Omicron BA2. So I discussed that topic. And next topic is about invasions, frog species and snake species. I discussed this topic and I discussed about this Democratic Republic of Congo that is Virunga National Park and I discussed about this endangered species that is monarch butterfly. And if you move forward in this FAQ page, so you can see article regarding this uh, Prevention of Money Laundering Act. I discussed this topic I think two days ago, so you have to revise that topic. And there is one article regarding the evidence of this COVID-19 origins. So these are some important topics that appear in this today's Hindu newspaper. So I covered extensively the current efforts of today from the other sources also. So by this I'm concluding. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So if you really like this video, hit the like button and also please share this video to your friends also. So this will be helpful for them. So by this I'm concluding. And if you have not been subscribed to Rathor Science Academy till now and if you are new to this channel, so try to subscribe to this uh, channel Rathor's Ice Academy and hit the bell icon so that you will be getting the regular notifications. So by this I am concluding. Thank you so much.